Hey everybody, Dr. Peebler. So I'm in, back in the hospital again, and I'm on another hospital rant. So I just wanna tell you a little bit of a story about uh, how important methylation and um, inflammation, um, insulin resistance, um, vitamin D status, nutritional status, and how that affects your health directly, okay? So I had a, a kid come in overnight. He was admitted by the nocturnist or the, no, the night hospitalist. And as a 22-year-old male, he had COVID about a month ago. He's still having chronic kind of cough, fatigue, uh, shortness of breath. He's been through a couple rounds of antibiotics, um, steroids, etc. Still feeling like crap. Came in last night, shortness of breath and chest pain. Came in the hospital. They did a CT angiogram of his chest, which is basically a CT with contrast, looking at the pulmonary vessels, and uh, was diagnosed with a, a acute pulmonary embolus, uh, basically a, a blood clot in his lungs. Um, should not have ever happened. Um, generally, what you do for these folks is you load them up with either Lovenox, which is low molecular weight heparin, or you give them heparin uh, on drip form until you can switch them over to what they call an oral anticoagulant, like Eliquis, Xeralto, Pradaxa, Warfarin, Cumin, whatever. Um, that's pretty, pretty much should have been the end of it, you know? As long as you didn't have a family history or like recurrent stuff, you know, the current standing for is coming out of a hypercoagulable state, generally. He, could, he should have been out today. I went ahead and looked a little deeper in him. I said, how does a 22 year old male, number one, get COVID sick enough to be symptomatic, number one. Number two, how does a 22 year old male um, have post COVID complications as severe as a pulmonary embolus? So looked into it, uh, ordered a couple tests. Uh, one of those, which was a vitamin D level, as you guys know, I love checking vitamin D. It's associated with post COVID complications and uh, worse outcomes with COVID. It uh, contributes to uh, the cytokine storm and uh, also uh, coagula, you know, hypercoagulability. His uh, vitamin D level was uh, near single digit, which is bad. And um, checked a, a homocysteine level on him. Uh, we haven't really talked much about homocysteine, but homocysteine essentially is a vascular toxin that uh, is a product of poor methylation. It generally takes B12 folate, uh, B6 in order for that uh, pathway to kind of work itself out. Now, there's some other ones that we use clinically, uh, like SAMe and stuff that can help as well. But uh, those are the things we generally use, um, and it's a measure of basically poor methylation status. And it, when you have high homocysteine, it's basically a vascular toxin. It increases inflammation in the vessels. It also increases your risk for clotting. So, you know, um, basically a 22-year-old male should not, ha should not be obese, should not have high blood pressure, should not have had COVID to begin with, but then you add low vitamin D status, probably a just, just a general poor nutritional status. You know, he doesn't take any vitamins. He's probably got omega-3, omega-6, you know, ratio issues, probably low zinc as well. Unfortunately, that doesn't come back very fast in the hospital. It's a send out test, so I couldn't get that back before he left the hospital. But uh, ended up having like a really long conversation with the kid, you know, and kind of a come to Jesus type situation. I'm like, look, man, you are 22 years old. You're obese, you're, have, you're on blood pressure pills. This shouldn't be. You shouldn't even know what a blood thinner is at this age. But now you're going to be on a blood thinner for a minimum of six, three, three months, a thirds of six months, and all the complications that potentially can happen from that because you have a blood clot in your lung because you don't take care of yourself. And so we talked. I heard about his diet. It was poor. His lack of exercise. His poor kind of just lifestyle in general, smoking, etc. And um, anyway, after a long conversation, you know, we kind of like came to a conclusion that this is what we need to do to make your life better, and etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And um, anyway, just just underscores the importance of um, no matter how young you are it's hard you know as, as a young person to want to take care of yourself and you know take vitamins and get out in the sun and stuff like that it's, it's hard to explain people that because in general most young people are pretty well and they think they can conquer the world and there's nothing ever going to be wrong with them but this is a perfect example of a 22 year old person you know because he didn't have vitamin d probably because he's zinc deficient probably because his b vitamins are toilet in the, in the in the toilet and his b6 and, and b12 and folate were all low i checked them all um you know ends up in a hospital ends up with a pulmonary embolus ends up with post-covid symptom symptoms for a month uh, still coughing still short of breath you know and uh, now with a, a blood clot you know and so it's just underscores the importance of these processes and so this leads me into the segue that the next uh, things we're gonna talk about, and it all directs, directly relates to COVID or directly relates to everything because these are the fundamental things that um, damage the body and uh, cause disease. 
You know, it's not necessarily the root cause like we look for in functional medicine. Uh, that's that's always an ongoing process, and it's usually more than one thing. But generally, the root causes cause these four processes to happen. And what these four processes are called, or what my mentor calls them, as the four horsemen. Okay, so that's chronic inflammation, chronic oxidative stress, insulin resistance, and catabolic physiology, which is basically another name for excess stress producing excess cortisol. And that we'll talk about what catabolic physiology exactly means and why he calls it that. But um, in this kid, he at least had insulin resistance, at least had inflammation, at least had, um, you know, uh, catabolic physiology, at least, at minimum, okay? We really can't check oxidative stress levels very easily in the hospital, unfortunately. In my, in my practice in Florida, it's, it's fairly easy. But uh, he, he definitely had at least three of the four horsemen, and he's 22 years old, and that's what led to this, this situation, you know? Not only the COVID illness and, the, and the, still the, you know, kind of continued COVID symptoms, but uh, now this pulmonary embolus. So um, anyway, just uh, want to let you guys know that uh, I haven't disappeared. I'm still working hard uh, out here. But uh, this was just a perfect example of how um, these four horsemen, uh, when they are uh, found in patients, they lead to poor outcomes. And you know, it could be something as simple as you know IBS or chronic fatigue syndrome or anxiety or something like that. But in other in other parts of the world, uh, it can be much more serious things like you know heart disease, uh, strokes, cancer, etc., uh, autoimmune diseases, etc. So. Um, we're going to talk about each one of these things at length and what they mean in kind of separate videos, but uh, we're just, I just wanted to reiterate how important this stuff is. So I hope you guys are all having a good day, and thank you for the support, for the support and I uh, look forward to explaining all these things in a, in a later date. Thank you very much.